Node.js has been shipping a lot of cool features in the last couple of years, and you might have missed them. If so, then stick around because in this video, we're gonna take a look at all of these cool things. All right, friends, so by far my most favorite feature that has been released so far from version 22 is a native TypeScript support, meaning it's not fully supported yet. It's still partial, meaning you need to enable this particular flag to get the most out of it. But it means we don't have to install any third party dependencies in order to be able to transpile TypeScript into native JavaScript anymore. So as you know, if we use TypeScript like this, running it with Node, Node doesn't understand what a semicolon is. But now if I do use this flag, experimental strip types, it is going to work. So if you have some simple TypeScript, you can already go ahead and use it in your Node application. So the interesting thing in Node is that Node.js has this internal library called Undici, and it's basically responsible for all the HTTP interactions. And lately it got an upgrade. So now Undici is replacing this Axios library that has been very, very popular. As you can see, it has a lot of downloads and people are still using it. But now we can pretty much use fetch natively in Node.js, which means no third party packages. If you want to make a post or get request or whatever from your Node application, you can pretty much do it natively, just like you do it in the browser. All right, let's talk about native testing. Now, you know that in order to be able to test in JavaScript or in Node generally, you had to install a lot of packages. So you need to install a test runner, you need to install a specific library that is able to give you a specific testing syntax like assertions and so on. Well, now Node has this out of the box. As you can see, we only import test from Node and we can also import assert. And with assert and test, you're already able to write your first basic request. Now, if we go to the documentation of the 25th version, we already see that it has pretty much all the important methods that you would also find in other testing libraries, like it supports describe and it aliases. It also describes um, uh, only tests. We also have some examples here, including watch mode, global setup, and everything, including even mocking, snapshot testing, and reporting. So it's pretty much a full testing framework baked into Node.js, and you can already go ahead and use it within the latest versions. Another huge feature, in my opinion, is the fact that Node now has a built-in database. Yeah, you heard me right. So a lot of other backend languages, backend programming languages, used to have built-in in-memory database libraries, all right? So you could literally use a SQL database within your code. Now Node.js provides this as well, and it does it with the help of a SQLite. So imagine you have a relational database within Node.js. If you want to, for example, do some testing, or if you want to create a small web server or an API or like a database for your API, you can already do this. And as you can see, you can already import open from Node column SQLite, you can specify that it's going to be in memory, and you can do any query that you would normally do in a normal relational database. How cool is that? This has a lot of potential and a lot of room for development, meaning you can use it for very different, interesting use cases. Another fun point is the fact that it's been quite difficult to create unique identifiers within Node. So you would usually use this library called unique UUID. And as you can see, it also has a huge usage nowadays, but Node uses it out of the box now. So if you go to the crypto documentation, the documentation of the crypto module, you will see that we now have this method called random UUID. So it basically is able to generate unique identifiers that you would that you could use for objects that are being stored within the database. All right. The way you would do this is simply using crypto as you normally do, and then calling this random UUID method as simple as that. Yet another interesting addition is the fact that now you can add custom permissions or basically permissions to your node scripts as well as the files that node is usually able to use. So let's take a look at this example. Let's say we are running a specific file. Let's say it's index.js and it usually outputs hello world. Well, now you can specify minus minus permission, allow file system read everything. 
And now it is going to be able to read and write this index.js. And let's say if another node process is trying to use the file that a different node process has restricted the permissions to, this process is going to get a specific error when trying to access it. And last but not least, the WebSocket client in Node.js. Just keep in mind that this is not a WebSocket server, so it's still not a server that your client can connect to. But if your Node application is the client, then you can simply use the native uh, WebSocket object from Node.js and create WebSocket just like this. And it provides you all the event listeners that you would normally expect. This usually did not or was not available in Node. All right, guys, if you learned something new, this was a very short video, but I still hope you liked it. If you did, smash like and don't forget to subscribe. And I'm about to release some more interesting videos that you're going to enjoy. I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.